Hello. And welcome. In part 1, I explained how we planned our road trip, during global pandemic, I explained, how we traveled from Gothenburg Sweden, to Amalfi Coast in Italy by car. We tagged Berlin, Schwangor region, where we saw, Neuschwanstein Castle, Hohenschwangau Castle and, Alpsee Lake. Then we drove to Italy, and saw Lago di Braz in Italian Dolomites. We went to Venice, then to Rome and then to Amalfi Coast in Italy. All of that is in the previous video. If you have not seen that video, be sure to click the link up, on the right. In this video, we will travel back from Amalfi Coast in Italy to Switzerland and then to Germany, and then back to Sweden. This is, part 2. From Naples, we drove all the way to Milan. Where we had a night stay in a four-star hotel. We did not explore the city, mainly because we were very tired to do so. On the next morning, we were ready for Switzerland. Our first stop in Switzerland was Chilon Castle. It was approximately four-hour drive from our hotel in Milan. When you enter Switzerland, the world around you changes dramatically. It was like a feeling that you were eating a starter and then suddenly, you moved on to the main course. Or. It's like you were traveling in a convertible from 1950s, where the sun was slapping your head every minute. And then suddenly, you started driving a modern day Rolls Royce. Where you had air conditioning, a roof over your head. And, you knew it's damn expensive. Anyway, we stayed at Chilon Castle for approximately 3 hours. I rate this destination as 10 out of 10. If you come to this part of Switzerland, you should come and experience this castle. Then we departed towards Interlaken. It was approximately 2 hours from Chilon Castle. Interlaken is located on the flat land called Bodeli, between two lakes, Breens to the east, and Thun to the west, and alongside the river Ara, which flows between the two lakes. We stayed in a traditional Swiss chalet for three nights, that we had booked over Airbnb. Our accommodation did not have any kitchen, but we asked our hosts, if we could use a portable oven, that we had bought in Italy. They allowed us to use it, which was awesome, and that is how we saved money, because we did not eat out. We did buy little bit of grocery there, like milk and some taco bread. Anyway, on the evening we reached our accommodation in Interlaken, we went to see Lake Breens, it was 5 minutes walk from our accommodation. We walked around the lake, the sheer beauty of it was unreal, the blue water, surrounded by beautiful green mountains, really made it special. We loved every minute of it, and that is how we ended our first evening. On the next morning, we departed towards Grindelwald. 
It was approximately 30 kilometers from where we were staying. We had plans to do mountain coaster ride, that we could do with our child. I wanted to do ziplines and mountain cart ride too, but children who were less than 35 kilograms, were not allowed to do those activities. We had checked Grindelwald first website for prices. I will put link in the description. When we reached Grindelwald, we had to buy tickets for the activities and the cable car at the counter. The cable car tickets had one day expiry, but could be used multiple times during that day. We went to do the mountain coaster ride first. It was a great experience. We all enjoyed it a lot. We did it multiple times. I could not make any aerial footage of it, because it was slightly rainy that day. After that, we took turns on ziplines, because we could not do it together with our child. Ziplines were rather short, but fun experience. We had first glider as well there, which my wife did, but I skipped that. I went for mountain carts ride instead.
plan was to see Lauterbrunn and Valley on the same day, but it started raining like crazy. So we turned around and went back to our accommodation. Every evening, we walked around the Breen's Lake. It was so peaceful. When you go into these peaceful places, you tend to forget about your daily stressful life, where you have to work to be able to put food on the table. On the next morning, our plan was to see Oskinen Lake which was approximately one hour away from our accommodation. But we went to see Lauterbrunnen instead. We stayed in Lauterbrunnen for approximately four hours. It is no doubtedly, one of the most beautiful places, I've ever seen. I rate this place as 10 out of 10 as well. To be honest this should be a must see place on your bucket list. After that, we tried to go Oskinen Lake, but it started raining again. So we had to turn around, again. It kept raining till evening, so we just drove around and went back to our accommodation. Later that evening, like our daily routine, we roamed around the Breen's Lake and just relaxed. On the next morning, we departed for Lucerne, where we wanted to see the famous Chapel Bridge. This bridge was built in 1300s and it's one of oldest wooden bridges in Europe. Its length is around 168 meters. The bridge holds different paintings below the roof, which are basically events from Lucerne history. We stayed here for two hours and had our lunch, then we departed for Rhine Falls via Zurich. Rhine Falls is the most powerful waterfall in Europe.
After staying here for approximately an hour, we enter Germany. Our first destination on the same day was, Hohenzollern Castle. This castle is one of the most epic castles I've seen. It stands on top of a hill, and you can see it from very far away. If you want to see the full aerial footage of this castle, be sure to click the link above, on the right. I give Hohenzollern a 10 out of 10. It's a majestic castle. After that, we went to see Liechtenstein Castle, which was very close to Hohenzollern. When we reached Liechtenstein Castle, it was already closed but we were able to make some aerial footage of it. I will not rate Liechtenstein Castle, as we could not see it, and we stayed there only for 20 to 30 minutes. After that, we went to Stuttgart, where we had a night stay in Ibis Hotel. This was a long day. We departed from Interlaken early in the morning and we drove all the way to Stuttgart, making stops at destinations, which we wanted to see. This was possible in one day, because all destinations were close to each other, and we drove about 400 kilometers in total that day. On the next morning, we drove to Heidelberg Palace. Heidelberg Palace in Germany started building in early 1200s. It got partially destroyed by a bolt of lightning in 1537. Reconstruction work began right after and then in 1764 another lightning bolt destroyed the upper portion of the palace. Heidelberg Palace was only one and a half hour drive from our hotel in Stuttgart. The palace is beautiful but there is a lot of construction going on inside it, making upper parts impossible to reach for now. I give this palace an 8 out of 10. We stayed at Heidelberg Palace for approximately 3 hours. After that, we departed towards Elts Castle, which was approximately 2 hours drive from the palace. We found a lot of road closures midway because of floods. So we had to turn back and avoid that part of Germany. Then we aimed for Wernige Road Castle, which was the last destination on our list to cover. Due to road closures, we had to go around the area which was impacted by floods. That took a lot of our time that day. So we booked a hotel in between where we were, and our final destination, in a city of Gottingen. Since this was the last hotel in our stay, so I did not care about the price, I only cared about the comfort. Name of the hotel was G Hotel and Living, Gottingen. It was a four-star hotel. On arrival there, the administration asked for our COVID certificates, which was a bit weird because up till now, during our whole trip, nobody had asked us. We provided the certificates, after that we had to fill a lengthy form, just to get the keys to our room. The hotel had no air conditioning, we were sweating the whole time, which really ruined our experience. I do not recommend anyone to go and stay there. The next morning, I just wanted to get to Wernige Road Castle quickly, so we reached there early in the morning. video covering this castle is linked on top, right side. This is a very well maintained and beautiful hilltop castle. We really enjoyed here. I give this castle a 10 out of 10 and I do recommend you guys to see it, if you are in that area. We stayed here for 3 to 4 hours, and then we drove to Berlin again, by avoiding the flood impacted areas. The next morning, we took our return ferry from Lübeck to Malmo, and then we drove straight to our home in Gothenburg. 
The whole trip was an epic experience, we covered 22 destinations in just 20 days. We went little bit over our planned budget, because we bought some souvenirs, and spent little bit extra on the food at some destinations. Let me know, what you guys think about the whole experience, and where do you guys want us to travel next. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, as this allows me to keep creating content for you. Turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss out on anything.